Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it, and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today, we are discussing the Reverso Duo in Grand Thai Case 18 karat red gold, a supremely practical watch, and what might be the Reverso's signature complication. It's an easy watch to wear, and this is one of the modern duos. 42.2 uh, millimeters lug to lug, 26 millimeters from 9 to 3, not including crown or pusher adjuster. The watch is slim, considering a complicated watch with two dials and a rotating case, only 9.9 .9 millimeters thick with a rounded case flank that slides underneath any cuff. Let me back up a little bit and show you the watch in proportion on my wrist. It's an easy one to wear. I can recommend it for wrist suspension small as 14 centimeters circumference, and the spacing between the lugs, 19 millimeters, gives you a world of aftermarket options, but the OEM piece is nicely made, and as you can see, it's a handsome honey brown, large rectangular scale alligator leather with a monotone stitch, a little bit of bolstering to match the swell of the lugs, a folded edge, calfskin on the underside, and there is a double fold deployment clasp of red gold to match the case, and you can see it's fully finished, all of high polish internally, a curved chassis to match the underside of your wrist, and it has the double fold action, which I find is less likely to pinch a small wrist than a single fold, so JLC giving you a proper full clasp on this complication. You will note that in profile, the Reverso case is very different from the soldier shots, the head-on, that you see on the internet. So that's what you usually see. When you look at the watch from a three-quarter angle, you realize how vaulted and rounded it is. You realize that what appear to be straight lugs are actually conical. Now, the watch is of the Art Deco era, born in 1931. The Exposition des Arts Décoratifs of 1925 established the term, and the combination of curves and straight lines, the tension between the two, really defines the Reverso case. You can see the watch is flat as a board when viewed in profile. Turn it three-quarter, all of a sudden you see the curves, and then turn it head-on, and once again, rectilinear geometries only. The watch does feature a strong tension between the vertical sweep of the dial in the case band and the horizontal sweep of the triple gaudron, or the strakes, at the top and bottom. Now, there is a rotating case, and you can see that the chassis underneath features a handsome engine-turned perlage. The case itself is all of high polish, with the exception of the reverse side of the chassis, which is satin finished, and you can see it has a little bit of a step-back profile, so it nestles into the wrist and sits low. The watch does feature a classical reverso dial. And that means you have a sort of rose lathe pattern at the center dial, what's best described as a semi-piano key railroad track, and then outboard standardized black Arabic numerals on a satin base with a sunken and dished subseconds. The hands are all blued broadsword style for the hours and the minutes. Now turn the watch over and you realize this is what the Reverso is all about in the modern era. Originally, you would have a solid case back because the Reverso was a sports watch designed for polo players, and the thought was a solid metal case back would shield the watch from the mallets while playing polo. Well, by the 1990s, there was no longer a need to have a rotating case for the sake of protecting a crystal. There were many dedicated sports watches. G-Shock had already been invented, and broadly, we had a combination of thermoplastic for shatter resistance and sapphire for scratch resistance. So what to do with the iconic reversing case? Well, give the watch a second dial and put it to work. Now a travel complication with a pusher adjuster, you can see that this side of the dial is both loomed and equipped with a 24-hour AM-PM night-day indicator, so you can rapidly recognize whether you're looking at the day or the night. This is the time where you are not, sometimes called your home time. That's why you have that 24-hour indicator, so you know when not to call your friends and family who might be looking at the middle of the night when you are enjoying the mid of the day. You also note that the watch features a different finish, a sunburst metallic grain on the dials themselves, and then a Clou de Paris outboard with an anthracite gray finish. Inside the case, JLC manufacturer caliber 854. It is a manual wind, 45-hour power reserve, 21,600 vibration per hour beat rate, 21 joule, dual time system, and you have this pusher adjuster on the side that allows you to toggle your travel time. 30 meters water resistant. The case features over 50 parts, so the fact that it has any water resistance is a bit of a miracle, and the movement has been upgraded over the years with both a full balance bridge and a free sprung balance, so though the 
Versions of this watch from the early 90s to early 2000s do exist. Modern versions such as this with the external pusher adjuster are a little bit more robust and shock resistant internally. So this is the classical Grand Tai case size with modern running gear inside. The best of both worlds and an iconic reverso form. You can see this icon of the Chagere Le Coult manufacturer and make it yours on the watch box.